Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Hey, everybody. We are talking about a very, very important topic today, creating healthy boundaries with your salon team. We have first-time guest Jordan Betts here today. I can't wait for you to meet her multi-location salon owner and much more. Just wait until you meet this woman. Today is going to be a great day. Now, before we get started. I want you to know if you're listening today and you actually would love to see the faces behind the voices, you have an opportunity to watch today's episode on Beyond the Techniques YouTube page. So go to Beyond the Techniques YouTube page and hit subscribe and you'll get notified of all of our video podcasts. We have tons of education on that platform as well. That's free for you. Well, we really could not do what we do here at Beyond the Technique with this amount of content that we're producing without the help of our sponsors. Today, we want to thank Meet Your Stylist. Meet Your Stylist is a fun, easy, accurate matching matchmaking survey that connects those website visitors to your stylist so that they become lifetime clients. This goes above and beyond the logistics of what kind of services your guests are getting done. It's based on connecting future guests with stylists based on disc personality, profiling, love languages, values, and lifestyle preferences. There's really nothing like it. If you want to partner with Meet Your Stylist and join, let me just share one salon in Austin, Texas, Urban Betty Salon, who have gained over 16,000 leads from Meet Your Stylist. There's nothing like it. No Facebook advertising can do for you what Meet Your Stylist can do, do for you and getting and keeping clients. Go to meetyourstylist.com and get your salon signed up. Alrighty, everybody, as I mentioned, we have first time guests. I've been wanting this woman with us. Her name is Jordan Betts. And let me just tell you a bit about her. She has been in our industry since 2010. And in 10 years, She's been hustling. This woman has started her first salon in 2013. She is the owner of both Meet Need Salon and Mint, uh, Mint Salon, both in Rochester, New York. She's about to open Need Salon Wellness Suites. We're going to learn a bit about that. She's a former educator for Diva Curl for over eight years. And she's also the one you may see on social media with the brand called Stylus in Real Life. This is her passion, her mission. She wants to help make it awesome for hairstylists and salon owners, and that's her educational consulting platform. We are so excited to have Jordan here. Without further ado, help me welcome to the mic, Jordan Betts. Welcome to Beyond the Technique. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. And we have been trying to make this happen since like the beginning of the shutdowns and we're finally here. I'm so happy to be here with you because I know that you're such a driven woman. And I really want to start there. Like, what was it for you that made you want to get into the beauty industry where you said, this is for me? Honestly, the beauty industry was actually a backup. And usually when people ask me this question, they're always like, are you kidding me? Um, I never had any intentions of being a stylist. It was never my thing. I was never that girl that did the Barbie's hair or anything like that. I actually wanted to get into therapy and, but I was a young single mom. And so when she was three, I was like, if I go into med school, she's gonna lose me as a mom. So let me go into hair um, because my hairdresser convinced me to do it, right? So I was like, ah, I'm a pretty basic girl. I don't wear a lot of makeup. I don't really do my hair. Like, I don't know. Um, and it was my first client that actually sat in my chair after I got out of hair school that made me realize like, wait a second, I'm actually doing therapy right now. And I think I'm going to move forward in this direction. Um, so that's actually how it all started was this client that made me realize that it was therapy already in wow. hair. Okay. So you got into it. Uh, it sounds like you absolutely thrive on what we consider the beyond the technique, right? All those things you do to be successful beyond the technical aspects of being behind the chair. But was there for you this certain aspect of the technical side that you fell in love with, like coloring or cutting? 
Well, actually she had curly hair. And so that's actually how I started. So, um, and then of course, you know, becoming an educator with Diva Curl, obviously you can see where my path kind of went and opening the yeah. curly salon and all that. Um, this woman had curly hair. And when she sat down in the chair, she was actually kind of a miserable person. She was very upset, very angry. And I thought to myself like, well, this sucks. Um, I can't believe that this is the industry that I chose to be in. And I was too afraid to ask her to go to the sink um, to wash her hair. So I just started cutting her hair dry because she asked for a trim. And as I started cutting her hair, she started getting softer and she started getting nicer. And then eventually by the end of the service, I was actually able to bring her to the sink or like uh, she hugged me and she kissed me and she was like, you're the first person that listened to me. And then I thought to myself, like, this is something that needs to be learned, right? There, this needs to be taught. There's, if this is the emotion that she's going through, there's a psychology and there's an emotional side to cutting hair. It's not just cutting hair because science says we have to cut every six weeks. It's, there's something so much deeper to it. And so that was really what made it happen. And that's actually why I got into curls was because of that emotional psychological side. So I have been a curl cutter for 10 years. And I would say, I think I have like three straight hair clients left. Um, <laughs> that's it. Wow. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm into. That's incredible. And yes, your salon does specialize in naturally curly hair. Let's fast forward. What made you take that leap of saying, you know what, I'm going to go from being a, uh, a technician to being an entrepreneur. Tell us what prompted you to make that change and what, what has that been like? Okay. So, well, I ended up being really busy, right? Obviously I was booked out about eight months in advance. Um, and because of working with curly hair people and realizing that there's this emotional side to it, I was the only one in Rochester doing it, um, this way. And so obviously my book grew pretty quickly and fast. And it, and I, I just felt really bad about being like, oh, here's a, a stylist that actually can work with you, that can actually respect the texture of your hair, but you can wait eight months for your appointment. And so I was like, that is just so messed up. Um, so I ended up actually then beginning to educate with Diva at that point. Um, and then started to teach here locally and realized if I could start a salon and I could train other stylists to work with curly hair, that I'd at least be able to watch what's going on to make sure these clients are being taken care of properly. Um, because it's not just a typical haircut. I mean, there's so much more that goes into it. And so that's how Mint actually was born was the fact that I needed more hands on deck to be able to handle the amount of people calling in. Okay. It has been a challenge. Um, it's a struggle. And I mean, a perfect segue going into what we wanted to talk about today. <laughs> um, I'm a nurturer and I want to take care of everybody. And, and it's been very difficult because it does hurt really, it hurts so much as an owner, um, as a stylist, everything, any type of uh, relationship breakup hurts. And so it was just recently kind of learning how to be there to support somebody, but not to fix them. Mm. Right. And so, cause that's, that's who I am. I'm a fixer. So I always want to fix everybody. <laughs> so the journey of going from an independent stylist to a salon owner has been an incredible journey, beautiful, wonderful, and incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. Well, I really appreciate you just, I know that your vulnerability and your willingness to share transparently is why so many stylists and owners are, you know, you're magnetic and they're attracted to that because we were all told that as owners, if we wanted a great team, we had to have a great culture. Culture is a big, you know, theme in the last few years of salon ownership, less of a transactional relationship more of, you know, focused on culture and people and caring. And of course we do. We're in the relationship business for a reason. But talk to me a bit about that because we have to have healthy boundaries. What, so where do we shift so far to in creating these amazing cultures that could actually prevent us from having a sustainable business in the midst of having an emotionally um, intelligent hair salon? Well, that's a tough question. <laughs> so
So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really tough. Everything's really tough because it's a, it's a, you'll, there's no, there's no handbook out there for this. There's no handbook. And especially um, post COVID things have changed drastically. Um, but something that I've constantly, constantly talking about is that open communication and that ability to really open, open the doors. And I know that working with a lot of salon owners and stylists over the years, I hear all the time, well, we're open, we have communication, we're this, but I'm like, but you're not, but you're actually not. And so, and that's where I think that there's that disconnect. And I am not saying that I am perfect by any means because I have screwed up so many times, so many times thinking I, I was communicating, I was communicating, but communication isn't just talking. It's actually about understanding and hearing and learning. Um, and so that's been something that is really, really huge for these salon owners is to take a step back and realize that communication isn't just having conversations. It's not just talking. It's actually hearing, listening, and understanding, and at least trying to understand if you can't understand. Um, so really that communication is so many different levels. But the thing is, is that there's such a root of issue in our industry that there's a lot of stylists that actually have like a PTSD about past experiences in salons. And so they're so terrified to even begin communication that it's easier for them to just break, make a clean break than have that communication. And so it's on us as owners and as leaders to be able to start to kind of tear down those walls brick by brick. Mm. We can't go in and say like, there's no brick wall here, it's open. Because even if we don't have a brick wall, our people have a brick wall. And so it's up to us to take those bricks piece by piece and have these conversations and allow them to feel that freedom to have that communication with you. Wow, that's so good and interesting. And I guess if you're willing to share, can you tell us an experience you've had where maybe the boundaries weren't so healthy and what you learned from that? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I've had a few unhealthy relationships. Um, again, I am a nurturer and I want to fix everybody. And um, so this has been a journey, but it's, it's so important. So I had um, one of my very first employees. Um, she was amazing. Um, I loved her so very much. She was one of my very beginners, right? So I, I didn't have any, any ability or any knowledge on how to do this. Um, but we got really, really close. I mean, we were involved in each other's families and I was there during some really crazy stuff that happened with her family. Um, and she went through a lot that she needed to be able to have some compassion. Like I needed to offer her some compassion and I did offer her compassion, but unfortunately, because there was such a close relationship, that connection, there was that lack of ability to continue my business with her. Right. And so when you're having this conversation, when you're having conversations with your team, you need to, I've always said, you have to rule with compassion, right? I still have to rule my business. I still have to make that happen, but we have to have compassion for the people that are, we're working with, right? I allowed her to have too much of me, too much of my nurturing, and, and we were too connected that it ended up getting to the point where there was just not that mutual respect anymore because she kept saying, well, Jordan's my friend. Well, Jordan's my friend. This is fine. I'll just like, it's fine. I'll just call her. I'll text her. But what ended up happening is it actually started to affect my business um, because she wasn't showing up on time because she wasn't communicating when things were going on. She was making mistakes and and that's the thing is like, we need to have compassion, but at the same time, there is a business to run. Um, because if we don't remember that there are those boundaries that have to be put in place, our business will crumble. And that's what I see over and over and over again in these salons is that, that we have this fear as a salon owner, we have this fear to not give, 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 because we're so afraid of losing a person that we hold on and start to question ourselves and start to take away what we built and why we built it. So true. The fear of loss, it's huge. And I'm sure that for many owners listening right now, they've experienced a lot of loss this year and also have that same ongoing fear. I'm curious, Jordan, what do you believe like healthy boundaries looks like? 
I'm still learning these. Um, I'm being brutally honest and transparent with you guys. I'm still learning it. Um, I do have an employee and um, she's just the most amazing thing in the world. And I have to make sure that I remember to take a step back because I can easily dump on her. And you, and you see that as well um, in, in the salon world, right? I mean, we, we end up finding this person that becomes our, our person that understands things that helps us through stuff. And then we end up dumping on that person, but that's not what they signed up for. And so it is about remembering that boundary that there is that communication, but I'm not there to, first of all, they're not there to fix me. They're not there to fix the situation. I'm not there to fix anybody either. I'm there to support. And so it's remembering what position they're in. Who are they? What do they do? Um, this stylist is amazing and she's always, she'll, if, if I'm down, she can tell because she's been with me for so long that she'll shoot me a little like, Hey, love you. We're good. You're good. You're doing this. Like, I, you know, and, and she even just said to me the other day that she can't believe that I'm still standing with everything that I've gone through. Mm. And so that's an amazing thing to have that amazing support. But I have to remember that there is a boundary there because I need her to be part of my team in, in the capacity that she's in. And if I, I allowed myself to dump all of my emotions and all of the issues that I'm going through on her, that becomes weighted on her. This isn't her business. This is not, she didn't sign up for that. You know, she didn't decide to put her life savings into a salon. That's not, that's not what she did. And so we have to remember as business owners that this is our responsibility. This is our risk. And everything that, especially with COVID right now during this time, like, yes, this was insane. And this was the most ridiculous thing for our businesses. And I mean, I'm going through some crazy stuff with my businesses right now because of COVID, but it was my choice to open these salons. It was my choice to do this. It was not my team's choice. Their choice was that they were trusting me to offer them a space. So that's what their responsibility is. And my responsibility is to understand that I'm here to work for them. Yeah. I think it's so interesting that you led with that amount of self-ownership. You took ownership and responsibility in your role and what they should not, um, half, like the weight shouldn't be on their shoulders. I think most of the time when we start on talking about boundaries, you start out externally of like what you need to do to protect yourself from others. But you led just now talking about how you need to stop yourself from hurting or putting things on others that shouldn't be there. So good. That is such a different level of self-awareness. Um, I was really impressed that you, you went that route. What else can we do to create healthy boundaries within the space? Because I like that you brought up that other stylists on your team are going to have walls up, right? So it's not like you have this amazing open space where everybody is vulnerable. You have a lot of different dynamics and people come in with their own set of values. So how do we create as a brand and a team when you're not around those healthy boundaries that the whole team comes to know and, and respect? Well, we have a no tolerance policy um, so we, it's not that we are, you know, we're not ruling with an iron fist, but should a situation arise, should something happen, we coach immediately. It's an immediate conversation, um, because what tends to happen again, especially if you have these stylists that have these walls up from past experiences, as much as they say that they'll speak with you and talk to you about stuff, they don't. Um, and I have to remind my team every day, like we have a huddle every morning. Um, and I say it multiple times, you guys, I cannot read your minds. I cannot read your mind. And if you need something or want something, it's something you have, you have to talk to me about it, but they're still not going to come up and talk to you about it. <laughs> they're just not. And as much as we sit there and say, come on, come on, <laughs> like you can do it. You can talk to us. They still won't talk to you. And so it is just about having these conversations and giving them the floor to do this. You have to give them the floor. So with our salon, when something goes awry, something happens, we actually will immediately have a conversation, but we 
first want to find out how that person needs to be communicated with. Okay, does that person want to be called out like right then and there? Do they prefer a text message? Do they want a phone call? Do they want an in person meeting? I mean, we have to make sure that we're speaking to people the way that they can communicate. Because again, when we sit there and think we're communicating, if we're talking, 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 sometimes the talking is not the way that they communicate. And so we need to figure out how they communicate and how they're, they want to be corrected because you want to respect them when you're correcting them. But with our meetings, we have one-on-one -on -one meetings and we have a three series uh, set. So it happens every three months. And the first meeting that we have is their thoughts, comments, and concerns. It's all about them. Everything that they need to bring to us. Two weeks later, we have a meeting with them again, and that allows them the open, the open format to tell us what their issues are and what they're concerned about or any ideas that they have. And it gives us two weeks to fix anything. Mm. So that way they understand like, you can't just say that you're mad and then leave and not give us the respect of trying to fix something because that's not fair for a business owner. And I see that all the time with stylists as well is they hop, right? But you haven't given the salon owners a chance to fix the problem. You have to give them that. That, that respect is, is something that when it comes to boundaries and communication, this is what I'm hoping that the salon world will change to is that allowing people, everyone to be able to speak freely because as a salon owner, it is not fair to have someone quit on you without having the knowledge of how to fix. Right. So we talk about that all the time. Um, am I allowed to say a swear word on this or no? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we actually have an online form on our website that they can fill out to uh, make a, an appointment with us. And one of the options is calling bullshit. So on there, they can select I'm calling bullshit. And the reason why we have that is because I don't know everything and I make mistakes too. And so if something is not going the way that they think it should be going, they can actually make an appointment with me or my salon manager and say, I'm calling bullshit so that we know like, oh, wow, okay, we messed up and that's okay. Because if we messed up, we need to be able to fix that. Um, so then the second meeting is how we respond back. Okay, we took a look in the issue, you know, if it was between another employee or if it was something that I did or if they're mad about something or whatever. Um, then I can come back with an answer. And then the third one, we do a financial review um, because our financial reviews have, um, are completely separate from the feelings because we never want money and feelings to be associated. And I think that's what's been happening in our industry for way too long is that everything's associated with that. And when in reality, conversations and communication should be an ongoing thing forever, every day. Oh, Jordan, I love that. I took a ton of notes. If you could see the amount of notes I'm taking today. <laughs> I know. I was just thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I just like went on and on and on. It's so good. I'm so <laughs> kinesthetic too. So I love taking notes and be able to share and reference. So, okay. Um, how do you I equip your salon leaders? If you have two locations, you can't be everywhere at the same time. And so for many owners, they feel like, how do I possibly lead to this level with this many people, and especially if you have more than one location, how do you help the leaders of your salon live out these boundaries and these one-on-one -on -one communications? So actually, post-COVID, we actually combine our salons for now. Um, so before COVID, BC, <laughs> um, these, uh, my salon manager and I swapped days. So one day she was there, I was at the other one and we swapped um, and vice versa. Uh, we did have uh, that one stylist that I told you that sometimes shoots me the like, you've got this. Um, she helped a little bit, but that it's not, she does not want to be a salon owner. So in the beginning of the transition, when we opened the second location, she did assist and help, but we also had to make sure that I wasn't putting on too much because that's not what she signed up for. Mm. Uh, remembering what your staff comes in on, they didn't sign up for certain things. If they didn't, then you can't just lay it on them. Mm. You can't expect them to, to take it, right? If that's, if that's not what they want, they, they don't want that. Um, so it's about, again, communication, those clear expectations. 
And so when I say there's expectations, it's not just expectations of what I have expectations for my staff, but it's what my staff has expectations of me and what their expectations of our salon owner or our manager and our expectations with guests. And so it goes all across the board. So it's not just what my expectations are of the team. I have two expectations for my team. That's all I have. But they, I'm sure, have a list way longer than mine of mine, right? And so when it comes to having multiple locations, it's about that clear understanding of what's expected, right? You have to know, you can't just, the thing is, is like, as a salon owner, not everybody is meant to be a salon owner. And that's something that I hope that more stylists over time will start to understand. There is nothing wrong with your career if you're not a salon owner. You don't have to be a salon owner to be successful because it is not right for everybody. If you choose to go down that path, there has to be that clear expectations that you're setting for your team to have of you because we have a brain that's a little bit different, right? Than a, than a stylist that's not going to be a salon owner. Our brains work a little bit differently. Um, I am very OCD. I'm very meticulous. I have a very set way that I want things done. Um, my dad laughs all the time and he says, I can't believe you actually have people that work with you. And I'm like, I'm not that bad, <laughs> but I am, I'm really bad. And so I've had to learn how to step back because people can't read my mind either, right? So if I'm going to tell them, I can't read your mind, they can't read mine either. And I can't just say something and expect them to fully understand it, right? So if you're going to have multiple locations or even just one location, just even one, it's about having that ability to communicate effectively in multiple ways of saying what you need to say. And not expecting someone to understand something super basic because we have cultural differences, we have a million different things, right? And so nowadays, especially even with like interviews, I've noticed that in our interview process, we have to explain verbatim, bullet point, step by step. This is what I expect at this interview. This is what times is how I want you to look. This is what people need guidance. They really, truly need guidance. Um, and it's not a bad thing. And it's not a mean thing either. And um, it's also taking that step back and realizing that you're not really, at first I thought I was like micromanaging or like, um, you know, like pinpointing people being like, like or, um, picking at them. It's not picking at them. It's just offering them that clarity because people need guidance. They, they're not a salon, salon owner for a reason. Right. Well, and I've heard the saying clear is kind, but I have to ask this because I'm super curious. You said you have two expectations for your stylist. What are they? Ah, okay. My first one is show up on time, which is early. And my second one is do everything you do with intention. And that can go into multiple different ways, but with every decision that you make, whether it be in business or in personal life, do everything you do with intention. Because if you're doing, if you're making a decision or you're making a choice, is it going to serve you for what you're looking for in the future? So that's my, those are my two rules. Just show up early because you have to be early. You have to be able to, you know, get yourself grounded before your clients come in and do everything you do with intention. I love that. Gosh, you know, it has been such a hard year and we're all feeling the effects with our team having boundaries, even with guests, like there's so much. What are your hopes for the next six to 12 months? If, if it, in a perfect world, what would your salons look like? The future of our industry? What are your dreams for what could be? You know, COVID was really hard and it was really tough, um, but it was also incredibly beautiful. And there were so many things that we were able to learn. Um, now, I spent a ridiculous amount of money to be able to keep my salons open with no money coming in. That was the horrible part. But my team was able to take extra time with their family 
They got to experience things that they've never got to experience before. One of my teams, she had a grandbaby during it. And so she got to be with her baby for three months. Um, we didn't go back in phase two, we could have, but we, um, I decided that I was like, if I have the money to pay rent without money coming in, I wanted to give them an extra month. And so we stayed an extra month um, out, uh, mainly because this is something that we're never gonna be able to experience again hopefully. <laughs> um, but we always talk about, we've always talked about in our salon, like we want to have a working retirement. That's what we want to always treat everything like at our salons. So if you need to, if you want to go on a vacation, if you want to go to a concert, if you want to go to your nephew's kindergarten graduation, like whatever it is, I never want to say no to anything like that. Like, because I really want people to understand that life is so important and money will always come. The money will always come. I'm not concerned about that. What I'm concerned about is that people are able to find that nice balance in life. And I think that post COVID, I think everyone was able to take that step back and realize how beautiful it is to be able to spend a little bit more time on themselves. Self-care, wellness on themselves is so important. So moving forward um, with my salons, I really actually do hope to be able to create, I, I need to hire more people to be able to do this. Um, but I would like to be able to offer our staff the ability to schedule themselves. I don't want to make anyone schedule um, in the future. So eventually, once I have enough people to be able to fill the salon, I would really like to be able to just say, what schedule do you want? Fill it out. As long as we have three people, then we're good, you know, um, because everyone's life is different. And especially with COVID happening and especially with all these people with kids, things like that. Um, we actually just implemented a, pro a program called Life Benefits at the salon and those life benefits are um, bonuses that we're paying to people for whatever they need um, because sometimes they don't need health benefits right they have them from their husband or whatever or their wife and so i don't want to just say here's health benefits if they don't need it but if they need tires for their car i'd like to be able to pay for the tires for their car with the life benefits right um, if someone needs child care assistance i want to be able to offer money for child care assistance so that's that's the path that we're going in in our salons it's a world of difference than how i originally built this salon and the ideas but what we're trying to do is create more autonomy in the salon to be able to allow people to do what they have to do but have the support of being an employee instead of being independent mm -hmm. um, so that they have the business kind of holding them up and and again letting me take on that risk because they're choosing not to be an independent for a reason they don't need the risks that I'm taking because that's, they're not, if they were renters, then the risk is all theirs, but they're not, they're choosing to be an employee of our space. And so I want to be able to support them in any way I possibly can. I know everybody listening is like, oh my gosh, I love your mindset. I love your programs that you spoke about. I'd like to learn more. I'd like to be connected with you. And I I know that you have your stylist in real life brand, but what people need to know is that your website is makingitawesome.com. I will include that for everybody listening in our show notes today so that you can connect with Jordan. For those who are interested, Jordan, what would you recommend um, they do to continue a conversation with you so that you can maybe work with them throughout these same programs and processes for their salon? Yeah, they can email me at jordan at makingitawesome.com or I mean, through the website, I'm on Facebook. Um, I had some craziness with my messenger, but I think I fixed it so they can find me on Facebook. Um, the Stylist in Real Life Facebook group is usually where people are able to get a hold of me a little bit more because um, I'll hop on there and communicate that way. Um, but they can find me on all the different avenues. I mean, whatever is easiest for people. I don't check my Instagram messages. So don't do that because <laughs> that's just too much. But Well, I am going to put in our show notes the link to your Making It Awesome website. On the footer of her website, you will find her email. And then I'll also include the link for your Facebook group so that people can join 
and connect with you there. Jordan, it's been awesome having you here with me today. Thank you so much for imparting your experiences and your wisdom on us. And we have to do this again. We have to make this a thing. (laughs) For sure, anytime. Well, we appreciate it, you all, for joining us here today. Now, don't go away. I got to tell you that if your salon wants to specialize or already does bridal hair and makeup, but you really want to have a booming bridal business, Beyond the Technique has the class that you've been waiting for. And it's coming up Monday, November 16th, which is perfect before we enter into engagement season. So if you really want now more than ever to put all the marketing in place, all of your processes, systems, communication, bridal packages that include all-inclusive everything. If you want this route set up for your salon where you can have a tremendous amount of success, become the salon in your area like Be Inspired Salon that's known as Wisconsin's best for bridal hair and makeup. That did not come easy, but we've done it all for you. So we are going to gift you with a complete virtual tour of everything we're doing with marketing, how we go about the communications with brides, how we go through our consultation, our packages, all of our email templates, everything is included with this class. The investment is 87 and you will have lifetime access to the class and all of the class resources even after you signed up and have taken the class. So go to the link in our show notes and get your salon and your bridal coordinator signed up for this class Don't miss out, everybody. I want to see you there. As always, everybody, I appreciate you. We're going to survive and thrive through this whole experience. As always, everybody, have an awesome day and stay strong.